What was your first professional directing job? First professional directing job was when I took a short film I had directed when I was 22, my first film, shot on film, and I had a choice to make uh, between take that film and try to raise money and try to write a script and be an indie filmmaker or to go into commercials and advertising. So I chose the latter and I went into advertising. Like some of my heroes, Ridley Scott, Tarsem, Tony Scott, David Fincher. Um, so I took that film into several ad agencies and was offered a job right away. And, um, and then they said, we want you to shoot something on spec for us because shooting your own film and shooting a commercial is completely different when it comes to parameters for time and budget and so forth. And I got offered a, a script for a black and white surf style, uh, 16 millimeter um, surf. Like it was sort of like in the vein of the Malloy brothers, Jack Johnson, you know, this sort of like surf awesome guitar commercial for this taco brand. And um, so I shot it on film, shot it on black and white reversal, uh, which they didn't want me to do. They wanted me to shoot on color. They wanted to do change the color in the DI. And I insisted on black and white reversal. And uh, we shot it and the client loved it. It was a look they didn't anticipate. Had kind of a, it had kind of a, a, an endless summer style to it, but it was very, very, very high contrast. So it felt very portrait-esque with these beautiful people eating burritos. Oh, wow. That's and always so, fun to watch. And they really dug it. And uh, so I, I got known as the guy who was a little analog. You know, that was like right when red uh, camera was taking off. And I kept pushing analog the whole time. I kept wanting to shoot on film um, because we were going to be seeing everything in digital. Uh, I wanted to go the other way so that when you saw uh, my work or the work of that agency, that it would pop, you know, come out of people. So, yeah. You said you were 22? 22, yeah. So this was in the Washington area? Or yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I shopped my reel, which was a five-minute uh, boxing prize fighter um, short film called In the Corner, which no one will ever get to see. Uh, I shopped it around Seattle and Portland um, and a couple of other small markets. I knew that I wanted to stay in the Pacific Northwest. I didn't want to go to LA yet. And um, so, yeah, I shopped it to, I think, three or four agencies, and two of them were really interested. And then I went with the one that had the biggest accounts because I wanted to work on big commercials from day one. Yeah, 22. How does a 22-year-old convince an ad agency executive to use film and, and do it sort of more his right. way? I, I did a lot of homework before my first meeting. So those pitch meetings, uh, which took some time to get, um, I called around and I figured out who the creative directors were. I looked at their work. Um, I, I looked at who was doing stuff that was very trendy and, and sort of... Um, just what you would expect from an ad agency. And then I looked at CD's work that, that was really provocative or old school, or they were going for the kernel of an idea that, that maybe the audience or the consumer wasn't expecting with some success and some failure. You know, you look at ad campaigns and you're like, that was a great idea, or that was great execution and a terrible idea. And um, so I was really looking for agencies that did really interesting stuff. and. Fortunately, the, the creative director that I worked with, um, or create, chief creative officer, because he was the honcho, he had a passion for film. And he had a passion for Errol Morris, and he had a passion for uh, Scorsese, and um, he liked these eccentric pictures that other people would never know. And I knew what they were. And um, so when I sat down with this particular individual, and I showed him my film. He said, oh, you shot on 16. I said, no, I shot on Super 16. And I started talking about film stocks. And he knew some of that, but he didn't know all of it. But he was turned on because he was like, this kid, which I was a kid, um, wants to be, um, he wants to go after things like a filmmaker, not like, um, not like a copywriter or whatnot. And um, so we ended up uh, talking about Films like The Last Waltz, right? Or um, 
Uh, Endless Summer came up, of course. Tokyo Olympiad, which is a really awesome Criterion documentary about um, the Tokyo Olympics where they, I think it's like 10 or 12 filmmakers, they hired different filmmakers and each filmmaker shot different events differently. So some shot video, some shot eight mil, some shot 35 millimeter, and then they cut it all together in a documentary. That, that actually was primary topic of our first interview. We talked about this very obscure documentary that only cinephiles really know about. And, um, and, uh, and then we ended up nerding out on film stock. And so he, from day one, he was very um, supportive of trying to get that across the line um, with all the clients. And some of them said no. Um, so then he was really supportive of if we weren't going to shoot film and we were going to go digital, that we studied it. You know, he gave me this bandwidth, like time and some resources to say, hey, we're not shooting film. What should we shoot on? You know, and uh, it was, um, you know, the advertising industry paid f- for me to go to film school. Do you remember how much you were paid for this first directing gig? Yeah, I had a very interesting um, role at that agency because they didn't hire me freelance to direct. They hired me to direct a lot of their stuff. So I kind of had a contract right away, which is very unusual. Usually you're a freelance director and you pick up this and you pick up that. And uh, I think because of this creative relationship that I had right away with this um, creative executive that he really wanted that. He wanted like, oh, hey, if you're going to direct or DP what we're doing, I want you to do all of our stuff. So all of our stuff has a brand, right? Because one of the ways things become really inefficient in commercial production um, until you get to a certain level when you're paying for a name or you're paying for an established director that has a brand that brings gravitas to a project. But everything else is, has an inefficiency to the fact that you, know, you build the whole production team and then the next project you change it all again. And the next project you change it all again. Um, and that can be beneficial for multiple clients, of course. But this particular agency's size had some big accounts, but not a lot. And so they, uh, they thought it was really beneficial to hire me and put me on salary. So, and I think I made $42,000 a year. And then within about a year, I sat them down and asked for a massive raise. So. How long did you end up staying with this? Um, just under three years. Three years? Yeah, yeah. It was a very... Uh, uh, I, sw- I came right in um, at the time when they had uh, an NFL team account um, and I got to work on that account uh, at a high level and that, uh, that team went to the Super Bowl and our work was up on Jumbotrons and they were using our work to do big ad buys and so it was kind of like, it was kind of like being on top of the wave before it rises, you know, so it was a timing thing. Um, but, but getting in that door was about a, uh, collaborative passion for film and movies and talking, um, uh, talking at length. I mean, we would go on location in New York or Montreal and we'd be in the car for hours, this, uh, creative director and I, or we'd be on flights and we would just start talking about movies. And so we had this, we were both always kind of in agreement secretly that, every commercial could be a film. And um, that stuck with me, that sort of rebellion, you know, because a client wants you to photograph their chicken or their burrito or something. And we wanted to tell a story about why people even care about this brand. And um, that that stayed with me through all of my advertising career because I always was pushing back on aesthetics like what it should look like or on the fact that it needs to have a story or people don't care uh and sometimes when you're in a room full of marketing people they really don't care about your point of view about that so um so yeah i stayed there for um a few years and then i moved on is there a style to finesse that especially because you might have been one of the youngest people in the room i'm just assuming i was for a while yeah um i was usually the youngest which means i tried not to say much uh, unless I felt really, I, I really wanted to listen. I really wanted to learn. I didn't know the advertising world at all, you know, and I didn't presume to know how a client gives an agency a million dollars to shoot an ad campaign. Like, I'm like, I don't know how that happens. And how do they siphon off a half a million of that to do a TV spot campaign, right? 
or whatever the budget is. So it was a lot of um, shutting up, paying attention. Um, and so the finesse or the um, negotiation between an agency and a client is each one of those relationships is very unique, right? Because you have some clients who will talk to the creative team at an agency and they'll say, we trust you, go for it, right? That's an optimal situation. And then you'll have a pessimistic situation, which is a client that's like, we need close-ups of the mop or the chicken or the sport cleat or whatever it is. And you'll say, well, who's, you know, who's holding the burrito? Where are they? And how did they get there? And why are they there? And that's the story of that ad, right? And there are some clients that are um, not interested. Not inter they're interested in thinking that the reason why people buy things is because they're robots. And they're not. People buy things because they decided to accept your invitation. So, and I think advertising is an invitation. You can make an invitation for people. And a lot of people, um, I mean, advertising shifted a lot since I was 22. Um, and it's very, there's a lot of things overall in the market that are way more beautiful or the production value of things is better. Um, but the storytelling is the same. It's still very A to Z. On one side, you have a, a absolutely excellent storytelling that happens to be about a brand, right? And then on the other end, you have like, um, you know, a detergent ad that's just telling you how clean your socks are going to be. So, yeah, I don't know much about the nuance of actually convincing someone to want to shoot my idea. Like I, I actually don't know how to do it exactly. I think what I learned over time was you get to know the client really well and you work on their trust and they'll trust you more and more. And then if something's not successful, you'll figure that out and they'll say, hey, your big idea didn't work. And I've had really big advertising ideas that didn't work. And I've had really big advertising ideas that, um, that no one believed in but me and some other people. And it got shot and it got done in one wards and whatever. And um, so I always paid really close attention to the trust level between the agency and the client and how to, you know, when the trust is right, you go, okay, cool, then we can do this.